All right, uh, this is going to be a short one today for our video. We're going to talk about, uh, I'm, I'm not going to cover the set. I did in class, I just took questions on it. Uh, the, this video is going to be uh, about the 611 task in questions one through three. If you look at the questions here, there's not a lot of room in between. So at the bottom of question number three, where your paper is, just go ahead and divide it into thirds. We're going to do question one, question two, and question three. Question number one, what I'd like you to do for the video if you're at home, is go ahead and pause what I'm talking about and draw the scenario that is created by question number one, question number two, and question number three, and then come back and see how you do. And do that. Le legitimately try and do that because the only way you're really going to get better at this is if you stop and think about what you're doing and how to do it. So do so please and I'm going to quickly uh, go ahead and draw these scenarios and I'm going to label them and we'll work on them. So question number one, we'll just go ahead. Uh, you have a wall, I've labeled the wall, uh, the ladder is 10 feet long. The angle of, of elevation from the ladder in the ground is 65 degrees, so you know that's how you know that the angle goes down here by the ladder in the ground. It, it, it specifically tells you that's important, and it wants to know how high the wall is. Well, again, we can only go based on what information they give me. I only know a side. I don't know two sides, quite, so I can't use Pythag, so I have to use trig. Well, if I start here, I want to know the height of the wall, which is, in the context of the problem, is a leg, and I know the hypotenuse, so that's a sine function. The sine of 65 is equal to the leg opposite, which is x over the hypotenuse, which is 10. And I simply cross multiply. Well, when you cross multiply, you're going to get the sine of 65 is e uh, x is equal, excuse me, to the sine of 65. And in this case, x is, uh, I think it was 9.1 or 9, one of the two. I think it was actually 9 is what it was. Um, 9.0. And there's the height of your wall. Okay? Uh, yeah, I got 9 feet. I, I, I didn't look at that. Uh, number two, you should have had a flagpole. Okay? I drew a flag. Okay? Uh, and then the sun is casting a shadow, and it says there is a 40 degree angle of elevation with a 15 foot shadow. Well obviously the flagpole's here. Okay? The flagpole's here, so the shadow should be on the ground. Where's the 40 foot angle? Well, it's an angle of elevation. Elevation is always up. Imagine where would I be standing looking up at the flag? Would I be on top of the flagpole looking up? No, that's unrealistic. So down here is going to be my 40 degree angle. Now it wants to know how high is the flagpole. Well, one of the other things we discussed in class is, how do I know which is the longest side in this figure? Well, the longest side is always the hypotenuse because it's across from the 90 degree angle, which is the biggest or largest angle. If the angle they gave me is 40, the other angle they give me is 50, because 50 and 40 is 90. That means that the shortest side has to lie across from the smallest angle. The smallest angle is 40, so the flagpole must be less than 15 feet, right? They tell me that the shadow is 15 feet. Now, it doesn't seem like it, maybe. Flagpoles are always usually pretty tall, especially if you're standing right next to them. But for this case, we're thinking logically. Now, if I want to know the flagpole and I know the shadow, in the context of the problem, those are both legs, so it's a tangent function. You have to, again, put it, we put an emphasis in class today on stopping and taking the time to think about what it is that, that you're doing and how you set up the problem. That's a big problem students are still having. So if that's the case, take your time and think about it. The tangent of 40 is equal to the flagpole over the shadow, 15 feet. Okay. FP being what I want to know. So if I multiply straight across, the flagpole is equal to the tangent of 40 times 15 
which the flagpole ends up being approximately 12.5 uh, feet. And we said that's reasonable because it had to be less than uh, the length of the shadow. The, the last scenario was talking about a highway and that highway, we're, we're on a six mile stretch of highway. Now if the highway was flat, yeah, okay, fine. But what happens is, is this highway increases in elevation. So the increase in elevation is 2,500 feet. Okay, so if I'm starting here in my little car and I'm driving, I'm going uphill. Okay, well from where I started, that's gotta be this distance opposite of where I start from. How far did I travel? Well, the highway isn't going to represent how far you travel, because remember that will go up and down. We're continuing, we're doing a gradual ascent, right? I may have actually traveled more than six miles. Six miles has to be the other leg. What does it want to know? It wants to know, what is the angle of elevation? Angle of elevation, try and think of that, of where you started from or what's going upwards. It's going to be down here. Now the other thing we have to do, which we didn't get to in some classes today, is we have to compare correct units of measure. I cannot compare 2,500 feet to 6 miles. That's, that's an improper comparison. I can set up my ratio though. In the context of the problem, these two sides of the triangle are legs. So since they are legs, it is a tangent function. So the tangent of x and it wants to know what is the degree, so it wants to know a degree, is equivalent to the leg opposite, which is 2,500, and I'm going to put feet here, over 6 miles, and I'm going to put my units of measure. We can't do this. We can't make this comparison. For one, if you put this into a calculator and solve it, you'll get a really weird answer. And think about it. I've traveled 6 miles as a really long way to travel, and I've gone up 2,500 feet. That's not very many feet compared to how many miles I've gone. That's evident when we take and convert miles into feet. How do we convert miles into feet? We convert miles into feet by taking six miles and multiplying that by how many feet are in a mile. How many feet are in a mile? I have students that don't know. You should know that. 5,280. And it ends up being, uh, what did I say? 31,000. 680 feet. Now we can go ahead and make this comparison right here. Well, x is by itself. I've got to multiply by the inverse. That's what I have to do. I've got to get rid of the tangent function, so tangent inverse. That didn't really make much difference on the screen, I'm sure, but it did on, on the board here. So x is by itself, and you have to find uh, the tangent inverse of 2500 divided by 31680 and I'll leave that for you to do All right? use your calculator and figure out what that is we didn't do it in class today but we will come back tomorrow and then we'll continue